Hey tene wiki, ka oro atu tātou ki whakatāne ki ta patu manu tahi me te ferret rātou ko no hoa. He pi kau kau, he koru koru, he pai hana no ho ki te painga. Ka tahi tātou, ka haere marunga waka ki te awa o whakatāne ki te puhi raki raki. Woohoo! Ka tahi te mahi rere ke! Whakatāne te wako hantina o te roe tauana, ngā mihi ki ngā tiawa o tira ki mā tātua waka. Ko te rohe o mā tātua waka tētahi o ngā wahi pai ake o Aotearoa ki ahau. Ko ngā tini kai o tēnei wahi te take i tai tai mai ai ngā matua tūpuna. Hei tēnei rā, kā tūtaki iau ki e tahi pākea me te tahi kanata hoki e mahi pērā ana. Oh, kia ora whanau, it's nice early in the morning, we've just had a nice hot uh, breakfast, our uh, host, uh, Marwood, has cooked us a nice breakfast, but you're going to meet her a bit later on, but as for now, it's man's time, and we're going to go and hunt some mean looking peacocks, that's right, peacocks, hey mate? It's the one, Howie. I didn't know you could shoot those things, mate. Well, well you can if you can shoot. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Are they good eating? Yes, very good eating, bit of a pest around here. Isn't that right, Stephen? Yes, they are. <laughs> they are a bit. There's a few. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Do they do much damage to the old bloody farm, mate? No, they don't do much damage. Eat a bit of the kiwi fruit before it comes off. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, we have to keep control of them. Yeah. But no other than that, no, they're not too bad. They eat a fair bit of grass, I suppose. Yeah. I haven't worried much about them lately. But, but no, we need to cut the numbers down. They're getting a fair bit. So you don't only shoot them for the meat, but the feathers are quite valuable, do they? Yeah, we've over the years developed a small feather business, uh, sell them for the Kotawai market. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, it pays some of the bills. And uh, yeah, hunting's good fun. Yeah. So I put the two together and uh, we like it. So what about the bird call, mate? Has a peacock got a bird call? Or what? Oh, yes. They make a call, but it's in the springtime. It goes something like this. Anybody else? Pretty but, good, eh? yeah. <laughs> it sounded a bit like well. Blair singing yeah. last night. This time of year though, um, they're not calling. They only do that during the mating season really. So uh, we're just going to hunt them as if they were big pheasants. Hello oh, Fano, first time ever peacock shooting. Are we going to be a bit of a blast? What do you reckon mate? Yep. Okay, gentlemen, see you later. Better half a dozen will do. Kwa ki te e tahi pikau kau e ngā tāne i roto i ngā rākau. Kwa tai ki te wā, we just come about oh, a thousand meters up the top. The boys actually gone down the bottom. It's a big flock or mob, whatever you call them. Peacocks down here, so they're trying to flush them this way towards us. Hopefully, I mean, that's the plan. Let's go, Harry. Come on, boys. Oh, horere te rongo atu i te haruru o ngā parirau. Ahau, e te whakakuhu mata ki rō tūpara. Owe, e maha ngā pahu ngā pūe haruru ana. Owe, arā anō te tahi. Yeah, what? Look, Howie, That's peacocks. That's target species. They're only young birds too, those are. Yeah, oh, that's a mature one. It's just that the, uh, they're in the middle of the molt now, so those feathers will extend to about a metre to a metre and a half long. So they're still growing. They'll be fully extended around sort of July and August. But yeah, they lose their tail every year. With they a bit of... And grow a new one, just like a stag. Does it grow, does it grow bigger every year? Yeah, at about age three, they're fully mature and they get the big, big tail. Why not the ahua pikau kau? The ahua hoki o ngā huruhuru. This is a yearling, born last year. Born about Christmas. Oh, 
Well, you got three. How many you get? Two. How many you get, man? <laughs> so where these birds gonna come from, huh? Well, if they come through, they'll probably come flying through low. So let's move down a bit. Oh, yeah. Come on, buddy. I'm right with you, mate. I'm Tangata Whenua. He's a Canadian, he's my god. He's my guy for the day. Ka mutu te pehi i ngā pāte ne kamera, ko a puta ke mai ngā pīkaukau. Nice shot, Howie. Nice shooting, Howie. Ona te mehi rere, te tere hoki o ngā manu nei. The flushing team changed tactics because they thought they'd scare the birds a bit more. So Blair took it. <laughs> well done, boys. Yeah, like I was saying before, I so rudely interrupted. <laughs> the boys thought they'd changed their bloody flushing tactics, so they told Blair, Blair to take his pants off, so he scared all the birds. Look, look, check those bloody chicken legs out. Check those chicken legs out, mate. <laughs> Scares the bloody peafowl any day. Are there any certain areas the old peacocks hang out more than others? Are? Yeah, there is. There is just where, where, the, where the food is, where the better grass is, um, around the orchards where the, there's a lot of fruit or where the palmers are feeding up maize silage and stuff like that, yeah, or fresh grass that you shut up paddocks and have come away. Yeah. They'll, 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 that's where you'll find them. No, they eat quite a lot of clover in yes. comparison to a sheep. Yes, what? yeah, they, they do. They do. They eat, a, well, almost as much as a sheep. Just one peacock? Yeah. So that's why you've got to keep the numbers down a bit because, you, you know, they just take over. Yeah, 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 yeah. They eat just as much, so if you get a big mob, they can... It's like having a big mob of sheep running around, you know? Check that catch out, man. They're not bad for a morning's work, eh, mate? Yeah, not bad. A few birds. So where do these from here, mate? Where, what happens now? Take us through the uh. process. Here we have a uh, unmature peacock. Oh, that one's a bit dirty. Let's get a better one out there. Here's a nice mature peacock. You can tell a mature peacock because he has the, the shell feathers on the back and, and obviously the eye feathers on the tail. And this time of year being, being May, they're about halfway elongated. So these feathers will elongate to about a meter, meter and a half. And they're fully fledged. And uh, this will go home and hang up in the garage for a little while, and I will then go and slowly pluck feathers off into little categories. Some blue ones, the shell feathers, and the green ones off the body. Those, those are a bit manky. But um, yeah, the Kodawai weavers love these. And uh, you yeah, know, we sell them to people all over New Zealand, and uh, Australia, and the States, Canada, Europe all over the place. So one more question, mate. Where do these things come from? Do they come with Captain Cook or what? Oh, I think they originally come from India and in Southeast Asia. Um, but I think it was the Pommies who brought them over um, just to have a few in their lawn, but they, uh, they escaped and multiplied. So they're native to India? Yeah, and they do extremely well here in the Bay of Plenty to the wow. point where they're quite a pest. Well, there you go, Farno. You learn something new every day. Well, finally we had an awesome morning, shot a few birds, and now we're going to partake and indulge and have a feed of uh, the fruits of our labour. A bit of peacock sausage, a bit of bacon, onions. Potatoes, mushrooms, a eggs. Bit of egg. Yep. To the table. Now, is it true, mate, you haven't bought meat in five years? Four years. Four years? Mm. Yep. And your husband's happy that he gets to go out hunting every day? He has to go hunting every day. So sort of wild game is part of your normal diet, eh? Yep, it's, um, it's the best way to eat because we know exactly what we're feeding the children, what we're feeding ourselves and what we're feeding all the people we care about. Well, that's enough for me. <laughs> what Blair am I going to feed the rest Blair of them? and them will have to go and get a pie. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good pie shop around the road. <laughs> what I'm getting from this, this visit and uh, our stay with you guys, mate, is you place a lot on family values, eh? Yeah. Family's everything. Yeah. And it's I see a lot of families falling apart around us and I think there's a couple of key things. Keeping communication going keeps a family working together. 
So with us it's about going out and gathering our kai and preparing it together as a family and eating it together as a family. Too much. Pretty simple values, but that's what makes a family work, keep it simple. Peacock sausage. Not bad, man. Huh? Keeps us well fed. This week we're talking about traps. Adam, take it away, mate. Okay, how are you? I'm going to uh, show you the principle of a deadfall trap. Okay, deadfall is uh, a basically a heavy object propped up, released by a trigger, which hopefully will land on the animal rendering it dead or unconscious or whatever. So um, provide us some food um, in a simple way. Okay, Howie, this is our ground steak. Okay, we're gonna impale this on the ground, whack into the ground. I've sharpened an end here to make uh, life a lot easier. Um, you can see our one of our key points here that's been cut out. And you see that sits in there quite nicely. This is very important, this is a, is a great fit, okay? Um, down here, I've made a, a, a special cut, okay? And you can see here, I've made another cut, an angled cut here, which will sit on our um, weight support. Now, as you can see, if I slide it in there, slides into there like that, and that fits up into there. So it's very important these cuts are made correctly. Otherwise, the, uh, the deadfall will not work properly, and you just find it's a uh, little work. You lift this up, Howie. Bit of a rough, mate. Right, not really. This is, this is our deadfall, Howie. It can be as, as heavy as you want as big as you want, uh, but the principles are still the same. Um, according to what game we're trying to target, depends on how big and lethal that this uh, deadfall is going to be. So if we hold that up here, I'll put in our steak here, and we've got our bait stick there, and our dead weight support arm, which will sit in there like that. Right, if you slowly lower that down, We'll just slowly put that on there so it takes up the weight. All right. Looks like good, mate. Yeah, like that there. Okay. Right, that's pretty much it. We can put our bait on here, on this arm here, okay? The animal will come along. Either way, you'll hit that arm, knock everything out, and that whole dead weight will come falling, crashing on them. Okay, got a stick here, Howie, and we'll do it as the action as if the animal's pulling it down, okay? Not bad, right, mate? <laughs> One squashed animal. Instant rabbit mince. <laughs> Too much, right, mate? There you have it, whanau. Adam's trap tip for the week. Join us next week when I set my snare off and we'll have rabbit roast. Go to the queen at the Koro Rafina. Tēnei wiki. Ona tahi anō au ki te hungaru aru. O tira ki te tahi poraka whenue noho tata ana ki matata. Kua tai ki te tahi wahi mā rake rake ana te titiro atu Hei whaka ko tahi ngā mahi a te hunga whakoho manu me te hunga puhi manu. No hands. No hands. If you shoot them in the back, they don't know who did it, but it doesn't look good on film. I find it hard to turn down a woman. <laughs> and what's the other thing? Be quiet. Yeah, that was it. Yes. Yeah. If you stand there <clears> quietly, <throat> we might be on a win. Most plans don't work out, but we'll see how your shooting goes, Harry. So no talking. It's pretty hard for a Morrison to do. Not talk, but no one. What we're going to do is we're going to stand across this dam head here, well, one on the other side, one in the middle, one on this side. The guys are at the head of the valley and they're walking down the valley with the dogs. So in theory the birds should come down. A few of them will try and peel off into the trees. So the person on this side just got to be mindful of that and try and stop them getting in there. But in theory, the birds should come down. So let's go and enjoy. Oh, Kafa! Woohoo! Hair pie! I found I've been pig hunting, deer hunting, never been injured by a pig or a deer. Get a pheasant, 
don't shoot it properly, that's what happens. Oh, uh, what do you want to be here with the pay on my knee? Well, I got my four, mate. Five shots. Four birds, not bad. Not bad effort at all. This more action I've seen in a day since bloody wake it if I walk last. Wasn't bad then, was it? Yeah. <laughs> Did you get on, mate, on your way down? Two, picked up two on the way down. Yeah, so uh, no, it was good. It worked well, didn't it? And uh, obviously yours were bloody hard shots, so yeah. Find a bloody 50, 50 mile an hour past me. Yeah. Hey. Anyway. Uh, no, I see a few sneak past over Graham's side there, did they? Oh no, that was a bit of conservation tag and release. Yeah. Yeah. We got two, so we're okay. I actually yeah. thought he was shooting with a pair of binoculars at one stage there. <laughs> 20 odd birds in the... Uh, 30 now, yeah. over 30. 30 in the back? Over 30 oh, now. You'd know, mate, you were the one going down. I had to there. carry the bloody things. I have to acknowledge <laughs> that, mate. Thank you for your work, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you, mate. Thank you. I never found that wild goose you sent me after either down the hill. Oh, thing, sorry mate. about that, buddy. Well, another day, Fano, another hunt. But this time, point of difference. We're here at the uh, Waimana River. And today we're going to go for a duck shoot on the old kayak. G'day mate. G'day. You all ready for a little float down the river today? I'm ready to go mate. Excellent. And what's the story with the old ruddy kayak? Well, it's, first thing I better clarify, it's a walker, not a kayak. Oh, right. So Sorry. a walker. Sorry. So it's a canoe. So we're going to give you a Canadian canoe. So nice and open, yep. really stable. Carries two people, can take a few more if you need it, as I might be. And we have a nice load on the boat. Have you in the front, you'll be jump shooting the ducks, the mallards, the parries, the poo kikos, whatever you want. Sweet ass. And whatever trips over in front of your gun. So I'm running with you or what? No, we're actually giving you Dave today. He's going to be your guide. He's the expert guide. Sweet ass, mate. Yeah, I'm just going to be cruising along in the back and with another with another canoe. With the crew? Yeah, I got the crew. I've got the expensive lot, I think, and I didn't want to be one with you. <laughs> What's his track record, mate? Well, so far so good. He's only tipped over once in the last six weeks. Uh, so we'll find out what happens later on today. Is that right? What about, take me through the uh, do's and the don'ts, mate. Okay, biggest things. What we have is we don't want you to move your body around lots. So try to keep your body central in the boat so that when you're actually shooting, it's a body rotation, not a body rock. That way we keep the balance nice, nice over the center of the boat. If we do, however, hit something like we hit a tree, because there's quite a few trees on the rivers in the Eastern Bay of Plenty here, if you hit a tree, lean onto it. If you hit a rock, a log, anything like that that happens to be an obstacle in the river, we're going to get you to lean onto that obstacle. So don't lean upstream, lean onto that obstacle. What it does, creates the boat to lift up, the water flows in underneath, and then for the water flows away, we stay nice and dry. If you lean upstream a little bit, just a fraction, what happens is the water catches the boat and could topple us. Right, make it sound so bloody uh, difficult, mate. Oh, luckily you've got an expert in the back of your boat, he'll keep you normally nice and dry. So I'll be in a kayak with a Kinnick? Pretty much, or in a Cana <laughs> with a Canadian in a Canadian canoe. Sounds good, mate. Ko te tūmana ko ka taia tēnei nono nui o ngāti whakau e te kuhu ki rōwaka. It's quite nice and stable when you're sitting down, just crouch down. And that's it? Yep, yep. When you're sitting, you can just keep your feet out wide where it's comfy for you. Sweet ass. Right. The seat made one. it. Lovely. The seat's okay. Survive. Ding 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 ding. Well, you got a pretty smile, boy. Oh, yeah. Mate i o te awa mate we kawe. Koe nei te hāngai e tauana e marino ana. A hua rua te kau mari ma kiromita te ro o te haere. Mai tāne atua, tai no atu ki whakatāne. He toru ki te whā haora pia te ro o te wā. Ina ka kite ta maho o ngā raki raki, kua rō ake pea. E mauri tau ana hau na te take, he kanata ki te hoi te waka. Kaore au e pirangi ki a mākua hau i te rā nei. So far, Fana, it's been a very dry experience and a very pleasant one of that. What a lovely way to spend the morning. Koi a kei ko nei ngā raki raki. Kei ko atu rā nei. We're currently travelling very rapidly. 
Well, I'm getting carried away. Ara he pukeko, wai ho noi ho aia. He raki raki ke te fainga. Kai he he raki raki maku. Yeah, he a hano te mau ngarongo. He baka tu tu pue hu ke te ku he he. Ku pu he nga me a irua. He ngari ku misi tore ke nga toe nga. Hmm, he ue ue te pu pu he mai roto waka. Me fakaro mo te kuri o te waka, me te tere o te manu. He rongo te wā, kia waia te tangata ki tēnei tū momo mahi. Ah, he raki raki anō mo te pēke. Tēnā raki raki mā, kai he a koutou. Kia kotahi anō mo taku hoa ple. Ara e tahi. Me pērā rawa te pūpuhi raki-raki mai roto waka. Mā blē kē tēnei. Aue, haore rā nei. It's going to be trouble. Kē tō te whānau Barrett Kainga, ka whakaimi hia ngā manu i puhi ai ngā rangi e rua kua pahure, ka whakaritea mo te mahi huti huruhuru hei mahi korowai, ko ngā miti hei hoatu ki te iwi kāngo whakatāne. Arā, e tahi anō mo te pauaka matā o Dave. Check this out, Fano. Two days hunting, over 40 birds. And the one that surprised me was this fella here, mate. I didn't know, didn't know you could shoot them, let alone eat the bloody things too. Yeah, they're bloody good to eat. And they're quite a pest around here, so the cockies are pretty happy for us to shoot them. Yeah, and the puke? And the pukikos, yeah, they're um, quite good eating. And uh, yeah, we shoot a few during the season. They're good fun to shoot, as you saw. Pretty awesome, man. And today we got to do a bit of duck shooting. Uh, what, the canoe style? Yeah, pretty much in the canoe. Floating down the river, almost putting people to sleep. And his navigational skills, man. Hey, must be the best. One rock in the whole river and he hits it. It's hard to get good help, mate. <laughs> well, mate, it's been a blast and I hope you invite me back here very soon. Because Come back any time, Howie. It's been bloody awesome, it's mate. It's good fun. We'll do something else next time. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, mate. Fantastic. Joyce. See you out there on the water one day. I reckon. And I'd also like to thank the guys from yesterday, especially Steve, for, for allowing us to hunt on this farm. Too much, Steve. And, of course, Mawera, the mean cook. The cook from heaven. <laughs> what do you reckon, bro? Oh, she's good. <laughs> and on that note, Farmer, I think it's lunchtime, so we'll see you next time on Hunting Aotearoa. Kill. More sausages, bro? A tērā wiki ke te whakatai tai rongo nui o te takitoru ki o pōtiki. Ko ngā whainga, ko te tariana puaka nui, te tariana tia nui ake rānei, te tamure nui ake, me te peihana fiore pairawa. E nei āhua tanga katoa, kei runga i tenei te hōtaka mahi aru aru motu hake, O Aotearoa! Kia ora! Kia Kia ora! Kia here we are in Whakatane at Upper Nui School with some of our hunters of the future. Tahirua Tōru Whā! Tahirua Tōru Whā!